direct it to the return circuit, back to the reservoir. Slight rotation of the valve gives a small amount of assistance, which becomes progressively greater as the torsion bar flexes and more assistance is needed. The grooves of the inner member are precisely shaped to meter the flow of fluid. All power steering pumps have a flow control valve to vary fluid flow and power steering system pressures. A pressure relief valve prevents excessive pressure from developing when the steering is on full lock and held against its stops. The flow control valve is located at the outlet fitting of the pump. During slow cornering or when parking, pump speeds are normally low. There is less demand for fluid flow, but to provide the required assistance, high pressure is needed. Discharge ports direct the fluid to the outlet, then to the steering gear. The outlet fluid pressure is slightly lower than the internal high pressure coming from the pump. This drop in pressure occurs as the fluid flow passes the needle and orifice in the outlet fitting. This lower pressure is transmitted through a bypass fluid passage to the spring end of the control valve. The pressure difference on the valve causes it to move away from the outlet fitting, but the force of the spring prevents it from moving far enough to uncover a return port back to the pump inlet. Movement of the control valve controls the position of the needle valve in the outlet fitting, and this controls the fluid flow to the steering gear. At higher speeds, with no steering maneuvers, fluid flow is increased. This reduces pressure at the outlet. The lower pressure is transmitted to the spring end of the control valve. The valve moves and opens the return port back to the pump inlet. Movement of the control valve also controls the movement of the flow control needle in the outlet fitting. The needle closes in the orifice, and fluid flow to the steering gear reduces. With the steering wheel held at full lock, the steering rack power piston chamber becomes fully pressurized and fluid flow stops. This high pressure is transmitted back to the spring end of the control valve, opening the pressure relief valve. A small amount of fluid passes through the pressure relief orifice, providing a pressure drop. The valve moves and uncovers the return port to the pump inlet. A predetermined relief pressure is thus maintained. The pump is normally a vein type, with sufficient capacity for all operating conditions. EPS, electric power steering. The use of electronics in automotive steering system enables much more sophisticated controls to be achieved. Electric steering is more economical to run and easier to package and install than conventional hydraulic power steering systems and reacts faster to quick steering changes from the driver. Typically, electric and electro-hydraulic power steering systems are also lighter and more compact than conventional hydraulic power steering systems. Both the electric power steering systems and the electro-hydraulic power steering systems are now considered as a viable alternative to conventional hydraulic power steering systems because of their energy, efficiency, and size. Electrically powered hydraulic steering, EPHS, replaces the customary drive belt to pulleys that drive a power steering pump in conventional rack and pinion steering system with a brushless motor. This system will still uses a pump but is driven by an electric motor to reduce power drawn from the engine. EAS eliminates all hydraulic components and fluid. Electrically assisted steering, which is EAS, is completely electrically powered power assist, assist system that eliminates all hydraulic components and fluid. An electric motor replaces the hydraulic pump. The EAS or direct electric power steering completely eliminates hydraulic fluid and accompanying hardware from the power steering system, creating a fully electric power steering system. An EPS steering system uses an electric motor attached either to steering rack or the steering column via gear mechanism and torque sensor. A microprocessor or electronic control unit and diagnostic software control the steering's dynamics and driver effort. Inputs include the vehicle speed, steering wheel torque, angular position, and turning rate. 
There are four types of EPS system. One's called a column assist, pinion assist, rack assist, and direct drive. The column assist type in this system, the power assist unit controller and torque sensor are attached to the steering column. The power assist unit is electric motor, the controller is the electronic control unit, and the torque sensor measures the load of the steering wheel. The pinion assist type in this system, the power assist unit is attached to the steering gear pinion shaft. The power assist unit sits outside the vehicle passenger compartment and allows assistant assist torque to be increased greatly without raising the interior compartment noise. In a rack assist type in this system, the power assist unit is attached to the steering gear rack. It is located on the rack to allow for greater flexibility in the layout design. It's mounted directly on top of that thing. It's big. The four type of EPS systems, um, the last one is called direct drive type. In this system, the steering gear, gear rack and power assist unit from a Form a single unit. The steering system is compact, fits easily into the engine compartment layout. Direct assistance to the rack enables low friction and inertia, which in turn gives an ideal steering feel. In these systems, active control provides constant feedback from sensors in the vehicle to control the unit, which calculates sophisticated computer algorithms. These features allow the steering system to react to the road, the weather, and even type of driver and provide assistance to the front and rear road wheels independent of the direct driver input. You can also steer your car by itself. <laughs> a steering sensor is located on the input shaft where it's bolted to the gearbox housing. The steering sensor performs two functions. First, as a torque sensor, it converts the steering torque input and direction into voltage signals for the engine control unit to monitor. Second, as a rotation sensor, it converts the rotation speed and direction into voltage signals for the ECU to monitor. An interface ECU circuit converts the voltage signals from the torque and rotation sensors into signals that the PCM can process and ultimately provides a proper output signal to the EPS assembly. The microprocessor control unit also analyzes inputs from the vehicle speed and wheel speed sensors. The sensor's inputs are then compared to determine how much power assistance is required to according, according to the force's cap capability map data stored in the ECU's memory. They, these map data are pre-programmed by the manufacturer. The ECU sends the appropriate command to the power unit, which supplies the electric motor with necessary current to operate it as commanded. The EPS system has three operating modes, a normal control mode, which provides left and right power assist in response to input to torque and rotation of sensor's inputs. The return control mode assists the steering uh, return after completing a turn. And the dampener control mode adjusts the amount of assistance according to the vehicle speed to improve road feel and dampening kickback. The electronic steering control unit is capable of self-diagnosing faults by monitoring the system's input and output and driving current of the electric motor. If a problem occurs, the electronic steering control unit turns the system off by actuating a fail-safe relay to the power unit. This eliminates all power <coughs> assist, causing the system to revert back to manual steering. An in-dash EPS warning light is also illuminated let the driver, hey, you're going to die, lost there. You're not going to die. The use of electronics and automotive steering systems enables much more sophisticated control to be achieved. Electric steering is more economical to run and easier to package and install than conventional hydraulic power steering systems. Typically, electric and electrohydraulic power steering systems are also lighter and more compact than conventional hydraulic systems. Both the electric power steering system and the hydraulic power steering system with a motor-driven pump are now considered as viable alternatives to conventional hydraulic power steering systems because of their energy efficiency and size. Electrically powered hydraulic steering, or EPHS, replaces the customary drive belts and pulleys with a brushless motor that drives a high-efficiency hydraulic power steering pump in a conventional rack and pinion steering system. 
Pump speed is regulated by an electric controller to vary pump pressure and flow. This provides steering efforts tailored for different driving situations. The pump can be run at low speed or shut off to provide energy savings during straight ahead driving. An EPHS system is able to deliver 80% improvement in fuel economy when compared to standard hydraulic steering systems. Electrically assisted steering, or EAS, is a power assist system that eliminates the connection between the engine and the steering system. EAS, or direct electric power steering, takes the technology a step further by completely eliminating hydraulic fluid and the accompanying hardware from the system, becoming a full electronic power steering system, or EPS. An EPS direct electric steering system uses an electric motor attached to the steering rack via a gear mechanism and torque sensor. A microprocessor or electronic control unit and diagnostic software control steering dynamics and driver effort. Inputs include vehicle speed and steering, wheel torque, angular position, and turning rate. There are four primary types of electric power assist steering systems. The column assist type. In this system, the power assist unit, controller, and torque sensor are attached to the steering column. Pinion assist type. In this system, the power assist unit is attached to the steering gear pinion shaft. The unit sits outside the vehicle passenger compartment, allowing assist torque to be increased greatly without raising interior compartment noise. Rack assist type. In this system, the power assist unit is attached to the steering gear rack. It is located on the rack to allow for greater flexibility in the layout design. Direct drive type. In this system, the steering gear rack and power assist unit form a single unit. The steering system is compact and fits easily into the engine compartment.